and welcome back to my podcast. So today's episode will be completely different from the last few episodes that I've been doing. So today's episode will be focused on doing the Duke of Edinburgh Award scheme. So this uh, is a scheme that a lot of people do uh, in order to make sure that the CV stands out. Um, so it's a it's a way of um, making sure your applications for university or even for jobs are um, a bit more stronger. Um, so yeah, so let's begin. So the Duke of Edinburgh Award, or DOV for short, it's a life-changing experience um, that you get to do in between 14 to 24 years old. Uh, and it's an opportunity to discover new interests and talents, uh, you get to have some fun times with friends, uh, as well as a tool to develop essential skills for life and work. And um, it, it, it's recognised as a mark of achievement uh, and respected by a lot of, um, a lot of employers. Um, so, as I said, 14 to 24 year olds can do this DV program uh, at one of the three progressive levels. So that's um, when you successfully complete, you get a bronze, silver or a gold Duke of Edinburgh award. So for bronze and silver, there are four sections to complete and five at school, uh, five at gold rather. They help uh, they involve helping uh, the community or environment, they help you become fitter, develop new skills, um, working in a team, completing an expedition, um, so things that are very important for uh, when you apply for jobs and also for higher education. So it's also a chance for you to have fun, make new friends and improve your self-esteem and build confidence. Uh, and also help with building work and life uh, essential skills like resilience, problem solving, team working, uh, communication and drive. Um, so basically just enhancing your CV, university and job applications. Um, so the Duke of Edinburgh or the DAV, uh, it licenses organisations that work with young people to run the DAV programmes. So that could be your school, your college, a youth group and club. Um, so, and then you also have the license organizations, LO, um, you, which involves young people paying for a participation place and are supported by leaders who support them through their programs. So helping them choose their activities, set their objectives uh, and achieve their goal. Now, the Duke of Edinburgh program was started uh, by uh, Prince, the late Prince Philip, who was also the Duke of Edinburgh. He was the late Queen of UK's uh, husband, uh, and he started this uh, scheme in the 1950s, and he headed it until he retired from public life, um, and at which point his youngest son, Prince Edward, took over, and he now uh, heads the scheme, basically. Uh, he's the head of the scheme, rather. So, I will be talking to you through about why you should do the DAV, my and my experience as well. So, why do the DAV? Um, so, it's for you, like I said, it gives you a lot of skills and confidence and edge over the others that when you apply for college, university or a job. So, your academic achievements when you apply for university is the main thing. But if you have like some soft skills that you develop through extracurricular activities, they can be quite important as well. Um, so the soft skills are like communication, commitment, leadership, and DAV, and the uh, and teamwork, sorry. And the DAV uh, is a fantastic way to demonstrate that you have these skills and also uh, show evidence uh, using those awards that you get. Um, you also get to make a difference in people's lives and you uh, and your community. You also get to be fitter and healthier and obtain memories that hopefully will last you a lifetime. Um, so next one um, I will be talking about is where you can uh, do the DAV. So usually uh, the DAV uh, licenses a lot of organisations that help young people. Uh, and usually this will be schools, colleges and youth groups to run the DAV across the UK. So um, 
if you're interested in doing the DAV, uh, make sure you ask your school, college, or university. Uh, if they don't deliver the DAV, they might set a um, might consider setting it up. You can also join a national youth group that runs this uh, runs the DAV for its members, so the scouts or the girl guiding. And you can also get in touch with your youth, local youth club um, that see and see if they got a license to run the DAV. If you're over 18, uh, you can do your gold DAV direct, which is what I did. And I'll tell you more about that as we go along. Um, so through this licensed organization, you'll be uh, supported by a leader who offers you advice and encouragement throughout your DAV project. So um, in order to qualify for the um, DAV schemes, for bronze, you have to be aged 14 or over for silver you have to be 15 plus or over and for gold you have to be 16 years or over so if you are not 14 yet but in the school year in which your peer group um turns 14 you can still start your dav program bronze dav program but you got to uh, check with your leader uh, who in if you're in school will be your school teacher usually who does the dav uh, similarly if you're not 15 yet uh, but you're in the school year that uh, in which your peer group, uh, your friend group turns 15, you can, you could be able to start the DAV, Silver DAV program. Again, check with your leader. So the next bit about the, uh, about the DAV is um, time scales. So there are three levels of programs uh, you can do, which when you successfully completed them, lead to a bronze, silver or gold Duke of Edinburgh award. Uh, the main difference between them is the minimum length of time it takes to complete them, how challenging it is, and the minimum age you can start your DAV. Um, so basically, when you start the DAV, uh, each of the sections, the activities that you do for the sections, which I'll talk about, uh, they can take like a minimum of one hour a week over a set period of time. So you can do like the activities in one week, so three activities in one week. So one for volunteering, one for physical, one for... Um, skills like in, in one week so you don't have to waste time elsewhere. Um, so it also means that you can fit them around your academic study, hobbies and social life. Um, but you got to make sure that you document your progress and all of the activities should be completed by your the 25th birthday. Um, so depending on your age you are free to start at any level but most people they start at bronze and work upwards. So for bronze, uh, you have to be 14, around 14 years to start it, and it takes you a minimum of six months to complete the bronze. So for bronze and for silver, you have a volunteering section, a physical section, a skill section, and an expedition section. So for volunteering is where, for bronze, you spend three months helping out in a local organization, uh, helping people Im uh, improve their lives, for example. So for me, I volunteered in my school library uh, because I was under 16. It was a bit difficult at that time to get volunteering experiences like in healthcare. So I helped with my school library for three months. I cleared this with my DAV leader and I was allowed to do that. For my physical section, I did it for three months uh, uh, as well. And I did, um, um, what did I do? I did karate. And for skills, uh, you are expected to do a minimum of three uh, three months. And then for your expedition section, you spend two days and one night. Um, so and this one thing I need to add as well. So you also have to spend an extra three months on one of the volunteering physics or physical or skills section. So my skills section, I think I instead of that the recommended three months for bronze, um, I did six months instead uh, to make up this uh, extra three months. Um, and I did my skill in trying to learn to play the uh, violin. And then when it gets to the expedition section, um, basically when you get to do the expedition, you have to uh, walk a set distance um, or hike or horse ride or um, if you're, uh, if you use a, more, a wheelchair, um, like travel a set distance um for two days for bronze and you got to camp during that one night um so you need to come up with like an aim and a goal 
and you work in groups of four to seven people so four being the minimum and seven people being the maximum and you got to if you're walking which is what i did you got to carry all of uh, for all of them actually you had to carry all of your um hiking equipment your um um your camping gear um all your food all your what drinks water uh like things you will need when you're hiking um in order to be uh, self-sustaining uh, during that time uh the dv website has a list of all this information but i will also post it on my podcast as well um so for the volunteering physic physical or skill sections it's your choice which one that you want to do and you can change it um but just make sure that um you set goals for each section so you know um what you're doing um what your aim is when you come to completing the uh, necessary progress so for silver it will take you at least six months to complete it if you've already achieved your bronze or 12 months if you jump straight into silver so for volunteering section uh, the DB recommends doing six months for physics physical and skills uh one section it has to be done for six months and the other for three months and then the expression section lasts three days and two nights if you didn't do bronze you must undertake a further six months in either the volunteering or the longer of the physical or skill section so for me because i did silver so i did a bronze for silver i did uh, six months of volunteering this time around i think i uh, co yeah i continued with my school library um and then uh, because again i was uh, under 16 when i started it so i just kept going with my school um not to prolong the daring and then for my physical i did uh, three months as well i did three months in badminton again at my school uh, and for my skills i did uh, six months of trying to learn to play the piano uh, and then for the expedition section i walked again for three days and we camped for two nights uh, in two separate campsites um, in the peak district so usually for the expedition they tend to take place in national parks um, you can also do it abroad uh, in like rainforest or in like national parks in like other countries um, but again that's up to you on how you want to set it um, usually people tend to do it in their home country because it's just uh, easier to set up now the time scales for gold so you need to do your program for at least 12 months if you've achieved your silver award or 18 months if you started at gold level without doing your silver even if you've done bronze so the big difference in gold is now you have a fifth section which is your residential section so for this you got to stay away from home for five days and four nights doing a shared activity with people you don't know so for the volunteering section uh you usually do 12 months um this is if you've done silver uh, your physical and skill section you one section has to be for 12 months and the other section for six months uh your expedition section has to be four days and three nights and your residential like i said has to be for five days and four nights so i was at university in my second day when i started uh, or going into a second day when i started uh the gold day of uh for me i did the volunteering for 12 months uh, in an active listening service now uh, the scheme that my university had uh, now because uh, the university semester uh, like dates were roughly nine months long uh, and i had a gap of like three months uh, where i did nothing because of summer holidays i um, ended up having to uh, recalibrate my time scale so i uh, to make up for the extra three months i didn't do for volunteering i um, finished it off and i started my um, start the new year again new academic year again uh, and i completed it by i think before the christmas holidays that year um and then for physical i did 12 months of going to the gym uh and then for skill section i did six months and i did uh, i joined the arts and crafts society um that my university had and we met once a week to do different different projects um for my expedition, expedition section i did four days and three nights no i did my expedition in um october 2020 towards the end of october 2020 and we went to the peak district now 2020 as you know is the year of covid 
and by October um, in the UK uh, I think we've had some easing of the restrictions um, so we can still gather indoors with like the multiple households so my friends and I we uh, ended up booking a youth hostel so the DOE had a scheme set up uh, called the DOE uh, with a difference uh, which meant that you can actually end up doing your expeditions in your local area uh, and each night instead of camping you um, you meet up with your teammates in, in like a set area and you can you need to um at the end of the day you need to cook your dinner together that was the requirement and you can you're free to go back to your home to sleep so what my uh, group and i did there was five of us so we booked uh two rooms in uh, a youth hostel in Hartington, um uh, in derbyshire south peaks in the uk um so we stayed there and we uh, were allowed to use the uh, the the hostel's um, um, like outdoor area, seating area to cook our meals. Um, and we um, were also allowed to use their drawing rooms um, to store our things. So that was open. But what wasn't open was the self kitchen. Um, so we had to cook outside, which um, was allowed. And we did loop walks. So instead of walking from campsite to campsite, which is what we did for Silver, uh, because as I said, Silver, you do three days of walking and two nights of uh, camping. You had to walk from a set area, a set start to, uh, destination to an end destination. Uh, like they're both very different um, destinations. So for Gold, I did loop walks. So basically my start and end destination was the same place, which was the youth hostel. So we walked around in a loop um, loophole, which is... Um, uh, it was uh, accepted um, at that time. Now, when this recording comes out, it'll still be 2022, uh, the year 2022. So the DOE with the difference um, still will exist until the end of October 2023. So if you're doing your expeditions uh, anytime soon, you'll you'll find that um, your um, like you, you can do uh, your expeditions in a different way. To normally what would have been accepted. Um, so just to go back to the gold again, um, if you didn't do silver you had to undertake a further six months in volunteering uh, or uh, you had to do the longer of the physical or skill section. So now we um, come to the cost of the of the DAB. So um, when you sign up for uh, the award you have to uh, pay a participation fee so that's 24 pounds for bronze award 24 pounds for silver and 31 pounds for gold this is in the year 2022 it could change uh, in the future so do keep a check out for it um, and with this money you get a welcome cost a welcome pack sorry there could also be additional costs for activities uh, and the licensed organizations that uh, run the DV uh, such as the schools, they could add uh, an extra fee to cover the administration cost as well. Um, so with the welcome pack, you receive a DV card that gets you discounts on things like kit and expedition, so that they, they don't need to be expensive. Now, when you're doing your expeditions with uh, with your school, so what happened at my school for my silver and bronze? My school actually rented out equipments. So for the expressions, things like a uh, rucksack, uh, the cooking stoves, the gas needed for the stoves because of the gas stoves, um, as well as like um, the tents or the tent pegs. Uh, I think they also rented out sleeping mats and tent, uh, the sleeping bags. Um, we obviously we had to pay the school to rent them out. Um, so not everyone brought everything. Uh, but you had to get your own hiking boots, which had to be the anchor support hiking boots. Um, you also had to, um, if you wanted to get your own rucksack, you could. Uh, I did because my brother also ended up doing the DOV, so we shared the rucksacks uh, amongst us. Rucksack amongst us. Um, you also need to get like really good uh, outdoor clothing, so like fleece jackets, waterproof jackets, uh, like really good walking leggings or shorts, you know, that you're comfortable in. 
um, because when you go on your expeditions, you go between usually March and October. That's like the recommend between March and October. So that's the recommended time scale for that. And um, you know the weather can be pretty bad. Um, my experience is that uh, in October and in April it usually rains pretty badly. Summer is fine, but it can get really warm. Because uh, I did my expeditions in the Peak District in different parts of the Peak District. Um, the weather varied. I don't know how it will be if you do it by the coast or like even further north, like in the Scottish Islands. Uh, it could be very different uh, due to like the weather. So you've got to pack for the weather as well. And the rucksacks that you carry uh, are quite big. Now they're big, but at the same time you can't fit much in them because remember you've got to carry your food for that the whole expedition. You've got to uh, carry some of your kit because you do share the kit among people among your group members rather so kit as in your tent uh, and the cooking stoves and gas you do have to share that amongst everyone um the dav also has a kit list that they recommend getting you don't need to get everything as long as you have good walking shoes and socks um and if you have like good utensils to use for your uh, like eating and like cooking um you're fine um now depending on the campsites you use Live, stay in some campsites are pretty good in the fact that they have like running water so there will be like toilets um to have like showers and stuff um so in that case uh, obviously having a, a small towel uh, usually like a, a face towel i would say get that because that's the one you can fit in uh so face towel um soap a bar of soap was much easier to carry than liquid soap because it took up less space and less weight um and also like um i wouldn't bother carrying shampoos because your hair will get dirty and that's a lot of weight to carry again so leave that until you go back home um and what else um yeah some for gold when you're camping one of it has to be wild camping so you can't obviously get access to running water also make sure you have your like uh many hygiene products you need uh like some mental pads for girls, uh, also like toothpaste uh, and lots of hand sanitizer. You will need to use hand sanitizer because when you're having lunch, um, you won't be having it always in tourist information places. It might be like in the middle of uh, the field. So having a hand sanitizer does help. Um, okay, so I will talk a bit more about food off, uh, as we go on as well. So once you decided that you wanted to do DAV, what you do is you sign up. So after you signed up, your leader will email a link with your eDAV account. So this is where you log your progress through your DAV program and your um, leader can check in and approve that you completed your activity for each of the sections. Um, so once you've added your home address, the EDFE sends you the welcome pack. I got it through my school for my gold and bronze, but for, uh, sorry, for my bronze and, um, silver, but for gold, like, they were sent to my room. And you get your DAV card as well that gets you discounts. Uh, so once you signed up, you can, um, start choosing your activities uh, that you want to do and decide your goals. Now your welcome pack also has, like, these booklets where you can, record your progress and you need to put the aim down and the conclusions that you've had since doing it and the signature of your um, assessor. So, whoever, so when you're doing your skills, physical and um, volunteering mm -hmm. section, you need uh, and your residential for gold, you need to have someone like sign it off saying that they, uh, they saw you coming once a week to these sessions and that you actually did something. Uh, so they need to approve it. They need to sign it. But, and you need to scan that document and upload it. Now for my gold, uh, I didn't use that booklet. Instead, I managed to get like the welcome pack contents from the DAV website. I signed it, uh, downloaded it, and I sent it to my assessors. They did it for me and they sent it back to me. Um, and then I uploaded them. I think you can also now do it where you just send a link to them, they complete it and they press submit and it's all done. Uh, that's how it happened for my um, expedition. Um, so it really, really varies on which your preference is. So once you finish everything, your leader will make sure that everything you've done is fine. They'll approve it, they submit it, and then that will get sent to your local authority or the head office in London. 
if you did it through EDAB and you can, um, and they will check it off and that's it, you completed your award. So, okay, so your EDAB, uh, so that's the digital system that the DAB has, so where participants can record your um, progress and activities online. Uh, and like, like I said, you can get your section approved by your DAB leader. Um, so it's pretty easy to use, um, and they got uh, the DAB website has a lot of like uh, stuff that you can uh, use to um, like, uh, help that will help you out the website if you are struggling. One thing that I really liked and used a bit um, for my gold was the EDAV mapping. Now, when you're um, especially on the hiking expressions, because that's what I did the walking expressions for them. You have to have a ordinance survey map. Uh, so that's one of those like uh, handheld maps, paper maps that people use when they're hiking. And you have to uh, draw out your route. Now, like I said, for, for my bronze and for my silver, we walk from the start destination. So on the first day, the start destination will be the car park that you get dropped off at from by school uh, or your whoever your um, However, you're doing your day with, and then from there you start and you walk to your first campsite. Um, so you have to map out that route, and your leader will check it to make sure they approve of the route. Now the route has to be challenging to an extent, so you got to climb hills with a rucksack, um, and you also had to have a goal for the um, um, expeditions as well. So one of the goals I had was to observe the local flora and fauna of the uh, area we were in. Another one I had was like, to explore the um, historical sites um, of the local area. So um, after that we had a look at presentation, so I just observed what I saw, wrote it down. When I got back home, googled it and just gave like a brief presentation on it. Um, so you had to basically map out the route. So for the second day for um, silver, you will do the same as also well. go from the first campsite you stayed that night to the second campsite. And then for the last day, uh, it will just be from the campsite to um, your uh, drop off point where you need to then, uh, your end destination or so where you get picked up and you go to your, go back home basically. Now for my gold, as I said, it was a bit different. So we end up doing loop walks around uh, areas that we really really um, thought was nice using Google Maps. So this EDV mapping really helped because we looked at things that we would like to do on Google Maps uh, and also from like uh, different websites. Um, so like I said I stood in uh, the youth hostel at Hartington Hall so they had quite a few trails like the Tissington Trail, um, there's quite a few historical sites you can see as well. A couple of caves um, and the Arbolo, which was like a Neolithic settlement. I didn't quite get to that actually. Um, Arbolo, that was our, um, I think, one of the, uh, like, yeah, the, the third day uh, because of the rain. The rain was really bad. So we ended up um, going back to uh, uh, having to stop our um, journey. Uh, we've already covered most of the distance. Um, but it, the weather was just so bad that we couldn't continue with it. Um, so yeah, things like that. You do have a look around the area and you can, um, yes, and then you can um, um, uh, gather like a goal for your, uh, for your um, DV expedition. Now, if you're like me and you did your DOV uh, after you started university, so after the age of 18, uh, you can sign up using DOV Direct for Gold. So it's a direct way for 18 to 23 year olds to achieve the Gold Award uh, online and independent, uh, independently without having to like be involved with the local DOV centre. Um, so basically it just lets you um, do your DAV activities in your own time and you get support um, from DAV leader who is will be based in the head office and either via via um, like email or phone. So I would get phone calls every so often from my DAV leader and also get like emails as well um, whenever they were free. 
Um, so that's that said about um, the DV overall. So now I'm going to tell you more about the tips uh, that I um, I uh, gathered once I um, I started doing the DV. Now one thing, one main thing I would like to mention is the budget. So DV is a rewarding scheme, but it's very expensive, uh, especially when you do the expeditions. Uh, the cost of doing the um, award increases every level uh, due to like, the increase in the time scales and the expedition length. So make sure you don't break your bank. So what I would say is um, if you can um, if you can like rent out equipment from someone that might be cheaper than uh, buying it, especially if you know you're not going to be doing all of the levels. So initially, what I would say for bronze uh, is maybe rent the equipment, so rent the rucksacks, the um, uh, the tents, the uh, like cooking stoves and gas, uh, cooking gas um, because the gas stoves actually, um, and like uh, any other equipment that you need, see if you can rent. So oh, you also need a compass for the maps as well. Uh, maps usually uh, like my school gave it to me, or like your uh, your leaders will give it to you. Um, so you get it from them, so like rent them out, um, so that you can, um, you don't have to pay for it. And after you've completed your bronze, then you'll know, actually, do I want to do silver or gold? Now, if you do decide to do silver or gold, then it might be worth buying a rucksack, which is what I did. And it worked out well because my brother also ended up doing all three levels, so we, it, it, we shared it. Um... So um, that's that. So like I said, there are also four to seven people in each expedition. So another money saving tip is that you can split food and cook amongst yourself. So for example, my group and I, we bought 12, two wholemeal pastas, two rice packets and two pasta sauces. Uh, we shared the cost amongst ourselves and we cooked them amongst us for dinner. Um, so basically it worked out very well. We just need one, needed one stove and we effectively effectively cooked a large meal and it was energy saving as well. Um, so like I said, because I did my youth host, uh, my gold decoration in the youth hostel because of the pandemic, uh, we were able to bring more items than possible. So we were able to keep like any unnecessary items in our room whilst we explored it. Uh, uh, right, uh, right. Unnecessary means like uh, food for like the, all of the days because uh, each for, for our lunch we all had um, sandwiches so we didn't have to carry like all the sandwich fillers just for what we needed that day. Um, we can for breakfast we all had oats and porridge so we I think we also bought evaporated milk. Uh, we also had like tea or coffee in the mornings uh, and also like a, a hot drink in the evenings, so hot chocolate. So things are that you can buy bulk buy with your group and bring them with you. So it was a cost effective way of cooking basically. Um, so we kept them all inside. Um, so we, could, we didn't get a chance to camp for gold. Um, so that was fine because of COVID we ended up staying indoors. Uh, not, not because of COVID rather, it was more the weather because it was end of October, it was quite rainy and cold we asked if we couldn't stay indoors and thankfully it was allowed. Usually this wouldn't have happened pre-COVID but it did because of COVID. Um, so it was it was nicer I would say. Uh, also remember to bring some snacks to keep your energy levels up because you will get hungry with all the walking. So like things like nut mixers, uh, you can make your own granola bars if you're interested in them. Um, um, I found a nut uh, mixer that I like the, the nut front and nut mixers quite uh, useful to have. Um, don't bring like any unhealthy things like crisps or chips or anything like that because they don't really do much for you. Um, sorry, pardon. Same for um, noodles as well. The pot noodles, they are very salt content heavy, <laughs> they're not very good for you. Some people do recommend them because you can use the um, the uh, the container of the pot noodles as like uh, another container uh, for your food and throw it away but um, 
and it's up to you. Like it, it honestly depends on how much space you have. So they will take up a bit of space. Um. So yeah. So that yeah. And then another tip is exercise, exercise, exercise. It goes without saying, but the DMV expressions are mentally and physically taxing. This is I learned this the hard way on my bronze. Uh, and I thought I was physically fit at that point, so I did karate. Um, I also did like uh, the school gym lessons, so I uh, I was you know having physical activity two to three times a week. So I thought I was fine. I wasn't. Um, <laughs> I still had some pain after each expression. So back pain usually because of rock sucks they do take a bit of getting used to um but it was also due to a lack of like endurance and stamina on my part so make sure if you are doing activities to help you with DAV that you do activities that help you with your endurance and stamina um so you need to do and I over recommend doing them consistently every day uh including the exhibition site so you make sure that you uh, like after the expeditions, you're uh, stretching your muscles um, so that they don't won't be too sore, um, and you know the next day you will feel better. Um, I also recommend exercising with your packed rucksack, especially climbing steep areas. That way you can gauge the weight of your rucksack on your back, and you can uh, build up your stamina too. Uh, again, if you get sore, make sure you stretch your uh, whole body. Um, but I would also recommend doing a lot of upper body work exercise as well, so that you can strengthen your back. And my last tip is to make sure that you enjoy. So most people do the DAV to enhance their CV, and whilst this has some truth, uh, it still makes you a capable and all-rounded individual. I found out that I can definitely survive camping uh, because I thought I was a city girl at heart but I can for short periods of time I can definitely handle camping um, and it's something I would do later in my life not necessarily with the with the 65 plus litre rucksacks we had for Davy. I think I would go with the smaller rucksacks that I had for my um, gold award um, because I was much more attainable um, you know, DAV is something that you might not get to do again, and since you have until the age of 24 to do it, you know, do look into doing at least one award, um, if it's, even if it's gold. Uh, because after the gold, after you finish gold, you get a chance to go to uh, either Buckingham Palace in London, or um, I think one of the palaces in, in uh, Scotland to uh, meet like members of the royal family who would like congratulate you on your award. Um, I've not been to my gold award yet as of this recording, uh, purely because of COVID, uh, but I did receive my uh, certificate through um, the post. Uh, you also get uh, a badge um, given as well. For, uh, they come in three different colours, bronze, silver and gold. Uh, but for my gold, I went um, for a brooch instead, so I thought it looked um, much nicer. So yeah, so um, even if it's um, something that you think is expensive, if you do get a chance to do it and are able to rent out some of the equipment or even borrow them from people who have done the DAV, I would suggest to go for it. It is quite an experience. Um, but yeah, just, just be sure that you are physically and mentally fit at least like one year before you do the expeditions. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the expeditions, I re uh, just realised now, you have two uh, challenges of doing the expeditions. So one is the practice expedition and one is the qualifying expedition. So practice, as you guessed it, it's a practice route that you do, uh, and then the qualifying is the actual, um, actual expedition that's uh, counted. So with the practice, um, you know, you get used to what you need to bring with you for your expeditions, what you need to carry, it tells you how your physical performance is, so you can like, um, for the qualifying you can obviously solve any issues that you've had um, during your practice, so that's the reason why you have to do it. Um, so just be mindful of that as well. So if you do de decide to do um, DAV through DAV Direct, so that's if you're after 18 years of age, um, or between 18 and 24, 
2324 and you want to do it without having to uh, attach yourself to an organization um you can also do your exhibitions with different companies and they will act as your assessor so basic, basically assessors are the people that you have for your all of your four or five sections and they assess you um on your aims and they just like give their opinion of how well you did for each of your sections and they sign it off um so you'll uh your assessor would be the company that you have uh, that you do choose so uh these companies uh you can find them on the um the DAV website i'll put a link up to the DAV um on my channel as well so you can have a look at it so um you can find different companies who you want to like either walk or kayak canoe or horse ride or um uh, cycle or like uh, using a motorized transport if you're disabled uh, i realized i forgot to mention ca kayak canoeing as well so they can help you out with it and that's something that you can organize um yeah so if you don't have a team as well uh, like a group of four to seven people they can help you with it you just sort of like sign up for like um their open events and hopefully um get something out of it so yeah so that's it for this um episode if you have more uh questions um on dav please uh, feel free to contact me um but also the dav website's pretty useful as well for all, uh, every all the information you need to know so anyway thank you for listening to my podcast and i'll see you guys next time